Today I will tell you what a data transfer object is and why it is not just some extra class and extra work, but actually a very powerful component of your application architecture. There's going to be lots of practice, lots of codes, and I hope that by the end of this video you will understand that DTO is your best friend. Okay, so imagine a typical situation. We have uh, the entity class, for instance, uh, employee, and it has some fields like ID, password, email, name, and uh, in our controller we uh, return the customer to the client. Well, that's a no-no. So the client receives the answer and then Surprise! It contains the password! Whoever is at that site is happy, the security guy is shocked, and you are looking for a job. Well, that sounds like a nightmare, doesn't it? So, jokes aside, why do you need data transfer objects? For several reasons. First, you protect your data and enable a high level of confidentiality. Secondly, you isolate the business logic. Thirdly, you create a more flexible API. And as an additional benefit, uh, the system becomes more scalable. Okay, so now when we understand the problem, let's uh, actually create a DTO. We are going to use uh, a Java record. Java records are perfect for DTOs because they act as uh, immutable data carriers. Our employee DTO will contain only three fields uh, – ID, name and email. See? No password. Then we create the mapper – employee mapper. Later in this video I will show you a very cool tool for automating the mapping, but actually you can create mappers uh, using pure Java code. So let's create uh, the employee mapper and uh, in our case it will contain the single method map to DTO. It receives uh, a customer and then it retrieves the necessary data from the customer object and creates a DTO object and then passes it uh, to the server. So now our service can return the employee DTO in the method find all, right? So we are using the repository to find all employees, then we stream them, map to employee DTO, and then collect them to the list and pass to the controller. And finally, we fix our controller and instead of returning the employee, we now return the employee DTO. And everybody is happy. There are several types of DTOs. So first there is the response DTO, that's the object that we sent to the client. Then there is the request DTO, which is uh, data that uh, the server receives from the client and then transforms into the object. There is the composite DTO, uh, which uh, helps you uh, in the case when you have uh, nested entities and uh, you don't uh, want to pass the whole list of objects together with uh, your main DTO. And then there are also aggregate DTOs that uh, can accumulate uh, data from various external APIs in one data object and then pass this uh, data to the server. By the way, about the composite DTO, have you ever been in a situation where the API returned too much data. Write in the comments uh, what was the most ridiculous mistake that you have ever encountered related to the APIs. I will show the best comments in my next video. Okay, so now I will show you how to deal with nested entities. And just as I promised, I will show you this very cool library for mapping the details automatically. This library is called Mapstruct. Mapstruct is a library that automates uh, DTO creation and reduces a lot of the boilerplate code that you otherwise have to write yourself. To use Mapstruct, you need to add the dependency to the configuration file. We also need to add the Mapstruct processor to the Maven plugin that uh, generates the mapper implementation at build time. Also, if you use Lombok, 
you should add the Lombok Mapstruct binding to the plugin as well. Great, we're all set. And now let's look at another entity called user. It contains four fields, ID, username, email, and password. We are going to start with a very basic example of uh, Mapstruct usage so that you could uh, uh, grasp the idea behind it. So imagine you are in the perfect world where DTOs and entities have uh, the same fields. Well, actually, that is quite a realistic situation. Let's look, for instance, at uh, user request DTO. It contains ID, username, email and password, just like the user does. And then it can be transformed into the user entity. So, in this case, we can create a mapper, let's call it user mapper, and we're going to annotate it with the mapper, that's for map struct. And here in this interface, you create the instance of the user mapper that you're going to use in other classes. This mapper contains a single method called the map to user and we are passing the user request uh, and returning the user that's it and then when you run maven clean install the mapper implementation is going to be created in the target directory let's look at that as you can see mapstruct created a method for converting dto to user and it uses the same logic that uh, we did right so it extracts the data from the dto creates the user passes the data to the user and returns the user so you don't have to do it yourself you don't have to do it manually which is just super cool after that in the create user method of uh, your service class you map the user request uh, to the user using the instance of our user mapper and save it to the database Okay, so what about the situation where the DTO and the entity have different fields? So just like in the case of uh, response, we don't want to pass the user password to the client, so the DTO has uh, a different set of fields. Good news is that the process is almost the same. So you create a method in your user mapper called a map to user response, and then you add just one single line to the mapper annotation, unmapped target policy, reporting policy, ignore. In this case, the mapper is going to analyze the entity and the DTO, and it will map only those fields that are available. So let's run Maven Clean install again and look at the new uh, mapper implementation. You can see that uh, the mapstruct uh, added another method to the implementation, which is uh, map to user response. And you can see here that uh, it uh, uh, retrieves uh, only the necessary fields. You can see that there is no password mentioned, right? So it doesn't work with password because uh, the uh, response doesn't contain this field. Maximum security. And finally, let's look at a more advanced uh, scenario with nested entities. In this case, we have uh, the class uh, order and customer. The order class contains the ID and uh, reference to the customer object. The customer entity contains some familiar fields like name, password, email, and also the list of orders. So, what can we do in this case? Let's first uh, create our DTOs. So, we are going to create the order response. It's going to contain the ID and total price, only these fields. And then we create the customer response DTO. It contains the ID, name, email, and uh, the list of uh, order responses. Also, it contains an additional field uh, that is not included into the entity, which is the total sum of expenses. And we are going to calculate it on the fly. So, as you can see, we have two additional problems, if we can say that. We need to pass the order uh, responses to the customer response, right? Not just orders. And we need to create a new field and calculate something for that. Well, nothing that Mapstruct can't handle. Let's upgrade our mappers a little bit. First, let's create the order mapper. It's going to be the abstract class, in this case, not the interface. 
and we are going to add the component model spring to the mapper annotation. As I'm using spring, I'm taking advantage of spring dependency injection and spring beams. So this option makes the order mapper the usual spring bean that we can use in other classes just like any other bean. And as we have now the class instead of the interface, so we can uh, write the custom logic for the mapping methods. Well, in the case of the order, it's going to be nothing fancy. Everything that we have already seen, uh, we are going to retrieve the necessary fields from the order and add them to the order response record. As you can see, I'm using builder here. That's uh, the Lombok functionality. So if you use a Lombok, um, that's uh, just a very convenient way of building details and uh, entities. And now we are moving to the most interesting part, the customer mapper. The customer mapper is also an abstract class. It's not an interface. And we are adding the same option, component model spring, and make it a spring beam. Next, what we want to do is to create the method map to customer response. Here, we also use the builder to retrieve the fields that do not change. So these are the ID, name and email. Then we check whether the order list of the customer is empty or not. If uh, you don't perform this check and try to map the list of uh, orders uh, into the order response, you will get uh, the uh, null pointer exception. And we don't want that, right? That's a nasty exception. Ugh. No. No NPs in my code. And in yours too. So we are checking whether the list is empty or not, and if it's not, we are streaming the orders, mapping them to order response, and gathering them to the list. This list is then added to the customer response. Okay, this task is done, right? The next task is to calculate the total sum of expenses. Here, again, we stream the orders for the customer, then we map them, right? So we retrieve the price for each order, and then we apply the terminal operation of uh, the stream API, uh, which is called reduce. With the help of uh, this operation, we can calculate the sum of all the elements that we passed in the stream. In this case, the doubles for the price. This is going to be our final sum and we add it to the DTO. And finally, you return the response that you have built. Well, that is just super easy, right? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Oops. And finally, the easiest part. We inject the dependency on the customer mapper to the customer service, right? So you remember that's just a regular spring bean that needs to be injected, and we do that, and that's it. Now you can use it to map the customer to customer response. DTOs are used everywhere. They are used in REST APIs, in Kafka, in uh, microservices to pass the data between them. So you can actually say that DTO is uh, the agnostic language for the data transfer. Just imagine DTOs are universal language of data exchange. Thanks for watching this video. I really hope that DTOs uh, became more than just extra classes for you. And they really are more than just classes. You can say that they are kind of a philosophy of clean and secure code. Like this video, subscribe to our channel, and remember, quality code is not that hard. I'll see you in the next video.